just want to make a report on my recent discovery, which I published in a paper on academia, which I put up for discussion. The discovery was of the holy shaft, this nondescript shaft, near the famous Osiris shaft on the Giza Plateau, a little bit north of the Khafre Causeway. And uh, it's an even uh, 100 feet from a whole bunch of the monuments at Giza, which is incredible that feet were used. And it's the uh, the center of what I call the holy circle because there, you take a radius uh, from that, that holy shaft uh, of 888 feet and uh, that touches the southeast corner of Khufu. Uh, it's tangent to the eastern edge of Khafre, goes through the center of the Sphinx and the center of Kenkawe. So four major monuments all touched in uh, you know, unique places by the circle formed by the holy shaft as a center with an 888 foot radius. And so in the discussion uh, paper, which I put up on academia, I uh, laid it out conservatively, but I did say the implications of the study are, did the ancient Egyptians know the foot? Because there's some pretty profound uh, metrologists who have written books on the subject of the history of metrology, following it in Sumer and Mesopotamia, in India and even China and other places, and uh, they're saying, you know, there isn't this basis for the Egyptians knowing the foot. And so that's one of the implications of the paper. Since the holy shaft is, you know, implicitly an, an old part of the construction at Giza and all the monuments that we've taken it to, you know, the Menkara Pyramid, the, the satellites of Menkara, the trial passages, uh, the underpass of the Khufu Causeway, you know, just all the different monuments that we've said it's an exact 100 feet increment. So 900 feet, 1,000 feet, 1,500 feet to the trial passages, all these different monuments, it's an exact 100 feet, feet increment. So that seems to say, first of all, it couldn't be by chance. That's the implication. That's why I call it an implication of the study. I don't say you can prove it, but it's an implication. Saying it's by chance or coincidence seems to me to be statistically impossible based on the number of findings. But anyways, that was one of the implications. And then another implication is obviously that which others have said in many different ways, and I've done many videos on this, is that there's a unified plan, that some master architect laid down a plan for Giza and somehow it was followed by especially the, you know, the kings of the, of the fourth dynasty. And you have to wonder why, because it takes a, a, an incredible, uh, powerful force to unify normally ambitious and warring pharaohs or kings in the history of the world. So, so uh, the implications of my finding, to me, are as, if anything, more profound than I thought they were when I first published this, because of the extent to which even erudite metrologists, professors, people who have written books about the science and the history of metrology, which as one of them pointed out, is a better form of archeology span than anything else because you know buildings fall apart and they dishevel, but if you can ascertain the measurements that were used, you can get an insight into this culture. So this says to me that the uh, legends that, that Enoch, and there are many in the ancient world, that, that, that Enoch was going to put up an edifice that would first contain the scientific arithmetic, the knowledge of the ancient world, that was his first purpose, and then secondly, to warn about a catastrophe to come. Uh, Giza seems to be doing that. It seems that there is this intimation with a higher superior knowledge. For instance, how did they know the foot? because there's no evidence that they did. And yet here's evidence that I have that they did. So some profound sage in the past knew the foot, and that's probably part of what Enoch was trying to get to us. You know, uh, Enoch is a real person. There's just uh, tremendous ancient evidence of it. You know, we don't, we, the, the books that are not first on our shelves today, but are plainly in existence show that Enoch was a real person with a history and he was in many ways called the father of writing and metrology. So he's the real Hermes, he's the real uh, Toth. And so Toth or Hermes are really 
mythical manifestation names of Enoch, who was a real person. Now, some people don't like that. They want to stay with their myth. They want, they want to believe in Toth. They want to believe in Hermes. But who was Hermes? You know, even the Greeks, whose god he was, don't know where he came from. And the Egyptians don't really have a real etymology for Toth. But Enoch has a real etymology. He's listed three times in the Bible, and that's probably one of the least places he's mentioned in terms of ancient books that write about these things. So it seems to me that I'm tapping into some of that. Why? Because the modern metrologists are saying, well, the Egyptians didn't know the foot. Oh, really? Then, tr So the only thing they can say in response to what I published is, well, that's coincidence, or you haven't discovered it. In other words, Google Earth isn't accurate enough to give a hundred foot increment measure. So even though you're showing that, we don't believe it. So that's that's the best thing they can say against it, that they don't believe it. And that's fine. You know, Google Earth obviously puts a disclaimer out. They don't want to be used as a scientific tool because of liabilities and stuff. So obviously Google Earth doesn't say you can count on us. But let's be honest, Google Earth is based on the best GPS technology we have today. It is incredible that you can measure in meters and feet and inches on the Giza Plateau or anywhere else in the world with Google Earth and get fairly accurate results. You know, studies have been done by people such as insurance uh, accident, uh, you know, I I investigations. They can't always be there, you know, how far did the car slide and everything. And sometimes they have to take those measurements after the fact. And they found that Google Earth is a relatively good substitute for actually measuring it on the ground. So are, there are some studies to verify Google Earth. I'm simply saying that um, I've, I've discovered something I think profound and real with many, many implications. So at the very least, this is very interesting. Okay, that's my update.